All right guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and 2020 is drawing to a close. It is about time if you ask me. Still, we did see a number of new GPUs launch over the past few months. So in this video, I'm gonna go over them and give you guys my top five GPUs for 2020. Of course, it has been very well documented at this point that supply for both AMD and Nvidia GPUs has been very, very scarce. So that means this video isn't really a buying guide purely because there's no real GPUs to go out and buy, but think of it as my personal top five favorite GPUs of this year. Just before we get into the list then, I just wanna say thanks for all the support over this year. If you want to hit subscribe and ding that notification bell, you can stay tuned for all of our upcoming videos as we head into 2021. It does really help us out. Cheers. Diving into my top five GPUs of 2020 then, we will start at the bottom with number five. This one launched at the end of October and proved to be a very effective GPU for 1440p gamers looking to spend under 500 pounds. Yep, you guessed it, we are talking about Nvidia's RTX 3070. Built on the GA104 GPU, RTX 3070 features 5,880 CUDA cores alongside 8GB of GDDR6 memory and it's also one of the more frugal Ampere GPUs, drawing about 220 watts in our testing, so significantly less than the RTX 3080. For me, the RTX 3070 is a very good option for 1440p gamers. In many titles, it will be pushing well over 100 FPS at Quad HD, including the likes of Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Gears 5, which is no mean feat. Even in the ultra-demanding games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Cyberpunk 2077, it is still good for a 60 FPS experience. This GPU can also play some games at 4K, but in my opinion, it's not a convincing 4K card. In over half of the 14 games we tested, for instance, it wasn't able to maintain 60 FPS at 4K, so I do see it as a quality 1440p GPU. A large part of its appeal is delivering quality performance at 1440p, putting it right on the same level as the 2080 Ti, but at an MSRP of £469. That makes it a really excellent value product, delivering cost per frame performance, which is only beaten by the RTX 3060 Ti, itself £100 cheaper. The 3070 also has DLSS support and it offers a decent amount of ray tracing performance, though you will have to drop down to 1080p to max out ray tracing settings while hitting 60 FPS. The reason I have put the 3070 in at number five on this list and no higher comes down to that eight gigabyte VRAM buffer. I will fully admit that in a lot, probably the majority of games right now, eight gigabytes is more than enough for 1440p gaming, but I do think it is right on the edge, especially when you're spending almost 500 pounds on a graphics card. Down the line, it would not surprise me in a year or two to see eight gigabytes just not being enough for those AAA games at 1440p. In my view, a 3070 with 10 or 12 gigabytes really would just give you that extra peace of mind that you're not going to be memory limited playing games in the future. That line of thinking kind of neatly brings us on to my choice for number four. And this is a GPU from Team Red. It is the smallest of the big Navi series. We're talking about the AMD RX 6800. Released in the middle of November, RX 6800 uses the latest RDNA 2 architecture and it sports 3,840 stream processors with 16 gigabytes of GDR6 memory and a 250 watt board power rating. In terms of its positioning, the 6800 has an MSRP of 530 pounds here in the UK. So it is a bit more expensive than the RTX 3070, but it is also a little bit faster by 9% on average at 1440p and 4K. Just like the 3070 though, I do see this as a 1440p GPU first and foremost. And actually over the 14 games we tested, it produced an average frame rate of 112 FPS at the Quad HD resolution. It is also a very strong value option in terms of cost per frame. And while it may be just a tiny bit behind the RTX 3070 in this metric, we're talking a difference of just 4% at 1440p, 
I think a large part of the 6800's appeal is that 16 gigabyte frame buffer. It may not be providing a benefit right now, but having more than 8 gigabytes of VRAM is definitely going to prove beneficial down the line. So for me, that is why I put the RX 6800 in at number 4 on this list. Of course, the relatively weak ray tracing performance compared to the RTX 3070 could be an argument for some, but that really does come down to how much you value ray tracing. For me right now, I would say I would personally prefer having a GPU with more VRAM compared to something with better ray tracing performance, but of course, that is my opinion, so do let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Next up, it's time to introduce the GPU I've placed at number 3 on my list. This was a very, very close call between two GPUs, with one of them just about edging ahead into second place. But for number three on my list, I've gone with NVIDIA's RTX 3080. Built on the GA102 GPU, the RTX 3080 features 8704 CUDA cores with 10GB of GDDR6X memory and a 320W power target. This really is a great GPU for 4K gaming, delivering 60 FPS in pretty much every title we tested. Cyberpunk 2077 is an exception to that rule, but no GPU on the planet can hit 60 FPS at 4K ultra settings in that game. You can also use the RTX 3080 as a great 1440p high refresh rate option, but it has been well documented that this GPU doesn't scale quite as well at the lower resolution. Compared to the RTX 2080 for instance, it's 66% faster at 4K, but 54% faster at 1440p. You'll still smash through almost anything at over 100 FPS, but if 1440p is your target, the RX 6800 XT can put in a very strong argument, but more on that in a moment. A clear strength for the RTX 3080 over the 6800 XT, however, is its ray tracing performance, which can do a decent job at 1440p, delivering close to a 60F experience in titles like Watch Dogs Legion and Control, but actually exceeding that in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The reason I put the RTX 3080 in at number 3 instead of number 2 is because I don't yet think ray tracing is a big enough feature to be the determining factor between two GPUs. It may well be for some people, and that is absolutely fine. In that case, you would get a 3080 over the 6800 XT with no argument. For most people though, in my opinion, I do think it's the overall rasterization performance which is the most important factor. And there, the 6800 XT is pretty much on par with a 3080, but at a lower price point, making it the better value option. I do think there is also a question mark over that 10 gigabyte frame buffer if you are using the 3080 for 4K gaming. Of course, that neatly brings us on to number two on this list, which I have already spoiled. It's the AMD RX 6800 XT. As the middle child of the big Navi family, this features 4,608 stream processors, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and a 300 watt total board power rating. As we said when covering the RTX 3080, the 6800 XT is pretty much as fast across the board. There are wins and losses for Nvidia and AMD along the way, but on average there's just 2% difference between these two GPUs at 1440p. Despite that, the £600 MSRP does mean the 6800 XT is the better value option, and it's also more power efficient, which I have to say is a really remarkable turnaround for AMD considering the sheer inefficiency of the Vega architecture, which only launched back in 2017. Like I said, choosing between the 6800 XT and the RTX 3080 was a very tough choice. And we go back to the fact that if you value ray tracing or DLSS, arguments can easily be made for the RTX 3080 being the superior product. In my opinion though, for £50 less, the raw power of the 6800 XT added to the fact you get 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 does make it a slightly more appealing proposition, but it is very close. So then, that brings us on to number one on my list, and I have a feeling this may surprise some people. The GPU I have chosen as my favourite of 2020 is the NVIDIA RTX 3060 Ti. This one only came out at the beginning of December, 
and it uses a cut down GA104 GPU with 4864 CUDA cores, 8GB of GDDR6 memory and a 200 watt power limit. I've chosen this GPU as my favourite as I think it is just an all round sensible choice. With an MSRP of £369, it's as fast as the RTX 2080 Super, making it a perfect candidate for either 1080p or 1440p gaming. And those are still far more popular than 4K screens based on the Steam hardware survey. It's also a highly efficient part, delivering chart topping performance per watt at 1080p and 1440p resolutions. It's even the best value GPU in terms of cost per frame at those same resolutions, which makes it very hard to argue with. It may not be an all guns blazing GPU like the 6900 XT or the RTX 3090, but I think the reality is those GPUs are just way overkill and way too expensive for the vast majority of gamers. In my opinion, the RTX 3060 Ti delivers excellent performance at a reasonable price, and it has very few, if any, shortcomings, so that's why I've chosen it as my favourite GPU of 2020. So there we have it, those are my top 5 GPUs of 2020. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of discussion about where I placed each GPU on the list, so do leave me a comment down below saying where you agree with me or where you disagree with me. We're also expecting 2021 to be full of GPU releases, including the likes of the 3060 and the 6700 XT, so do hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell so you won't miss our coverage of those future GPUs. You can also find a link to our Discord server in the description where we'd love to hang out with you guys, and why not consider backing us on Patreon where you can see some of our content early and get access to exclusive giveaways. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic for Kit Guru. I hope you had a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and I'll see you in 2021.